Growing up, the piano was my sanctuary. While other kids were running around outside playing football, soccer, biking, whatever, I was happily glued to the piano keys, honing my craft for hours on end. But as much as I loved the music, I couldn't help but feel a little twinge of self-consciousness about my body. I'm just going to be honest. I mean, I wasn't the most athletically inclined teen, and sitting at the piano all day well, didn't really exactly help me build the, the physique that I saw splashed across magazine covers and movie screens. I wasn't trying to be Bond by any stretch, but it wasn't until high school that I discovered actually a really great appreciation for physical activity. Joining the wrestling team introduced me to a whole new side of myself, one that was strong and capable and actually enjoyed the challenges. I fell in love, to be honest, with the discipline of just the sore muscles and the sweat and just the way that my body was being pushed to limits. I really enjoyed it. And then running became a really big passion, a way to clear my head, connect with my breath and my heartbeat. And I just had so many creative ideas every time I would go for a run. And so for me, it was just more clear in the head than it was for anything physical, to be honest. And then fast forward to today. Taking care of my body has become a central part of my life. My family and I, we are super committed to eating clean, nourishing foods that fuel us from the inside out. And while I still indulge in a chocolate chip cookie from time to time, because life is too short not to enjoy a little dessert, I found that treating my body with kindness and respect feels better than any sugar craving. Yes, I said it, and it's true. And then yoga. Yoga has become a really essential piece of my wellness puzzle, if you will. Stepping onto the mat every day, I'm reminded of the incredible things that the body can do. I mean, just the flexibility, the balance, the, the sheer strength required to flow from one posture to the next. But even more than the physical benefit, I've come to crave the emotional release that comes from sinking my body's movement to my breath. It's a way of coming center to myself, right? Of quietening the noise in my head and just being present in my own skin. And yet, you knew there was a yet coming. Even with all the progress I've made in my relationship with my body, those old insecurities, they still bubble up from time to time. That nagging voice that says, oh, you know, not lean enough, not fit. This shirt looks awkward. And just all the things that we go through whenever we look in the mirror first thing in the morning, right? And it's, it's a constant practice to choose self-compassion over self-criticism, right? To remind myself that my worth, it's not measured by how many abs I can count or the number on a scale, right? If this struggle sounds familiar, you are not alone. And so many of us have absorbed this toxic idea that our value is just directly tied to our appearance, right? We chase these arbitrary, these unrealistic ideas, and we declare war on our bodies when they fail to measure up. But what if there was another way? What if, like, instead of just constantly battling the bodies we've been given, we just make friends with them? The dimples, the jiggles, and all of the above. It's a radical thought, I know, I get it, but it just might be what we need. So let's take a deep breath together. Exhale. Because today we're going to explore what it means to make peace with the skin we're in. Let's find out. I'm Chad Lawson, and let's calm it down in three, two, one. All right, so first, let's unpack where this body hate 
even comes from. Have you ever thought about it? I mean, from the moment we're born, we are bombarded with messages about how our bodies should look. For women, the script goes something like, be incredibly thin, but still curvy in the right places, right? (laughs) Having a visible disability or not fitting this Eurocentric beauty standards. I mean, just forget it. I mean, your body is wrong, 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 right? And men, well, you know, truth told, we don't escape the pressure either. Better be tall and ripped and ready for that Marvel superhero callback any minute. Put the donut down. It's no wonder 97% of women and 80 to 90% of teen girls report hating their bodies. I'm going to say that again. It's no wonder almost 97% of women and 80 to 90% of teen girls report hating their bodies. Men too are reporting body dissatisfaction at record levels. We are set up to fail from the jump. And the question is, who profits from all of this body anxiety? Well, it's a $72 billion weight loss industry, for one, promising magic pills and dropping not-so-subtle hints that you're just a cleanse away from being gleefully bikini-ready. And this beauty industry, it rakes in over $500 billion a year, convincing us that we're covered in flaws that require their expensive products. I mean, even the fitness industry, right? Meant what's meant to improve health you know, often peddles this unattainable physiques and fat shaming dressed up as motivation. Have you even noticed in a lot of the apps now when you see the, the person working out, it says actor portrayal? Our body insecurity, it's big business. And then there's the mental and emotional toll of all of this body negativity. Constant anxiety about your appearance doesn't exactly set you up for confidence and joy. <laughs> it's hard to speak up at a meeting when you're busy berating yourself for that blueberry muffin you ate for breakfast. Now, as we reflect on a small, loving gestures we can make towards our bodies to begin a beautiful path towards self-compassion and acceptance, I'm reminded of another kind of endeavor. An endeavor that not only broadens our understanding of the world, but also connects us in the most profound ways. This, my friends, is about breaking down language barriers and embracing the joy of communication. There's no better way to embark on this adventure than with Babbel. One in five Americans have learned a new language on their bucket list. If that's you, make this year your year that you finally check it off your list with Babbel. What sets Babbel apart? Well, it's quick 10-minute lessons that are crafted by over 200 language experts. These lessons are designed to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks, focusing on real-world conversations that you're actually going to use. Personally, I have been using Babbel to improve my German. Believe it or not, I am trying to learn. And it's been incredibly fun. The convenience of fitting lessons into my crazy schedule and the practicality of the content have made it so easy to stick with. Babbel's speech recognition technology has helped me fine-tune my pronunciation, which is great because I do tend to mumble. It's like having a personal language coach always ready to guide you. And let's not forget the studies from Yale and Michigan State University that continue to prove Babbel's effectiveness. One study found that using Babbel for 15 hours is equivalent to a full semester of college language courses. That is some amazing efficiency that, well, I personally need in my life. So here is a special offer for my listeners. Get up to 60% off your Babbel subscription when you visit babbel.com slash calm, C-A-L-M. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash calm, C-A-L-M. Don't miss the chance to make language learning a part of your personal growth 
and global connection. Okay, so getting back to this. How do we call a ceasefire on the body hate? How do we wave the white flag and surrender to, to the fight? Well, it starts with a really radical decision, day by day, moment by moment, to reject a culture that tells us our appearance determines our value. It means adopting a new way of relating to the skin we're in, one rooted in respect and gratitude and even celebration. Here, picture this. Imagine it's 90 degrees outside and you're just dying to go for a swim, right? You could spend hours lamenting about the cellulite or self-consciously tugging at your bathing suit. Or you could just dive in and embrace the bliss of cool water on bare skin. You could seize the moment without giving a single thought to how your body looks inside the pool. What a glorious thing to be fully present in your body and the simple joy you can actually experience without punishing yourself for its shape. This is what making peace with your body is all about. Instead of focusing on how it looks, shine a spotlight on all of the incredible things you can do. Those things that you've despised for decades, marvel at their strength. I mean, carrying you up mountains and down city streets and dancing all night and chasing your kids across the yard. Those stretch marks streaking your hips, they're a sign that your body has grown and adapted, making space for life to flow through you. And that stomach that's anything but flat, cradle with your hands as you would an old friend. Think it. Thank it for all the laughs it's held and all the mills it's digested and all of the breaths it has sustained. Because here's the thing. Are you listening? Your body is not a problem to be fixed. I'm going to say that again. Your body is not a problem to be fixed. It's not a before picture waiting for its triumphant after. Your body is your home. It's your oldest, truest companion, and it deserves to be treated with care, not contempt. So instead of pushing it to be smaller or leaner or tighter, what if you focused on nourishing it, on strengthening it to better enjoy the activities that you love, or on resting it with plenty of sleep and hydrating it with clean, cool water and moving it in ways that feel good. What would it be like to actually be an ally to your body, to take its side? Huh. Start small, with one loving gesture at a time. Maybe it's some really nice lotion on your skin and just feel how just great it feels, right? Noticing the smell or the way that your muscles relax under your touch. And catch the reflection in the mirror and <laughs> wink at it instead of hurling insults or zeroing in on flaws. Feed yourself a meal that makes you feel vibrant and alive without a thought, right? And, and take a rest day when you're tired instead of forcing yourself to barely grind at the gym. Baby step by baby step, you can rebuild your relationship with the body that carries you. Pivoting from punisher to partner. And let's be honest, when the vicious thoughts creep back in, because they will, because well, unlearning a lifetime of body and negativity, well, it's a process, right? And so those thoughts are going to come, right? It's not a 30-day fix. But here's something that I have found that has been enormously helpful for me. When you catch yourself bullying your body, imagine you're talking to your five-year-old self instead. Oof. Did you hear me? When you catch yourself bullying your body, Imagine you're talking to your five-year-old self instead. Look at him or her 
so small and new and amazed to be alive and, and see if you can really unleash those cruel words. How do you feel ripping apart this sweet, innocent child? Right. Critiquing the size of their, their bellies or their thighs or their nose or whatever it may be. Feels pretty awful, right? I mean, we would never dream of inflicting such harsh criticism on a young person that we love. So why is it okay to treat ourselves this way? So the next time that you start mentally tearing your body apart, picture yourself as a five-year-old. Then consciously reframe that negative thought into something nurturing. Instead of, ugh, my arms are so flabby, try, my arms are strong. And they give really amazing hugs. Or instead of, I hate my giant nose. I'll try. You know what? My wonderful nose lets me smell fresh baked cookies and the ocean air whenever it's around. Our thoughts are so powerful and we have the ability to harness them for healing instead of harm. Not easy, but with enough practice, we can transform the way that we talk to ourselves and treat ourselves. And believe it or not, we can actually create a kinder inner landscape. What I'm about to say to you is very important. If you've kind of drifted away, come back. The goal isn't to feel 100% confident in your body 100% of the time. That's an impossible standard that none of us can meet. I'm going to say that again. The goal is not to feel 100% confident in your body 100% of the time. The goal is to make peace with your body, to call off the war and to create a truce, to coexist in this mutual care and goodwill. Even if you aren't always overjoyed with what you see in the mirror, you can appreciate the body you live in without subscribing to the belief that it needs to be flawless. You can accept it as good enough as is, while still striving to keep it healthy and use it in ways that light you up, but the goal is not to feel 100% confident in your body 100% of the time. You can hold gratitude and disappointment, appreciation and the desire for change. Making peace is about welcoming the full spectrum. So I want to give you a challenge. Here is your body peace challenge this week. I want you to set a timer on your phone for three minutes. Now, this is going to sound really silly. Just hear me out. Strip down to your undies, right? Or birthday suit if you're adventurous. Stand in front of the mirror and start admiring the view. When was the last time you did that, right? Begin with your feet. Wiggle your toes. <laughs> Fill the soles of your feet rooted firmly into the ground. And then silently thank them for all the places that they've taken you. And then make your way up your body, finding one nice thing to say about each part. Your ankles, they're so sturdy. Your, your knees, so willing to bend, right? Your hips, swaying to this internal rhythm. Spend extra time on the areas that you usually avoid or just criticize, right? I mean, shower those zones with the most lavish of praise. Notice how this feels. Notice how this deluge, if you will, of appreciation feels. Is there a lightness in your chest? Is there a tingle in your skin, right? A little grin tugging at your lips. Imagine how it would feel to walk through the world with this much love for the body that you're in. You can return to this practice again and again, training your mind to treat your magnificent form like the miracle it is. So try that this week. Set a timer on your phone. Three minutes. It goes quick. At first, it will be incredibly awkward. Just be honest with yourself. But focus on little parts at a time. Toes, your knees, your chin, your elbows, and just thank them. Thank your body for all the things. Thank your body 
for all the things. And with that, I want to leave you with the final thought. You know, perhaps the kindest thing we can do for our bodies is to stop trying to make them smaller. Because when we fixate on shrinking them, we shrink our lives right along with them. We say no to the birthday cake, to the the beach vacation, the spontaneous dance party, the second date. Also, we can just cling to the illusion of control over our skin. But the truth is, our bodies are designed to change. Hmm, I'm going to say that one again. The truth is, our bodies are designed to change. They're meant to evolve over the course of our lifetimes. Expanding, contracting, softening, drooping, wrinkling. All of these tell stories, right? Telling the story of the lives that we've lived in the folds and in the wrinkles and in the smiles. What a shame it would be to constantly battle against the inescapable truth instead of embracing it. Your body is your steadfast companion from birth carrying you all the way through every high and every low and every gain and every loss and every delight and every despair. It weathers so much and asks for so little in return. Just a little kindness, a little care, a little awe at what a wonder your body is. So here's to honoring those phenomenal frames that we live in, the dimples and jiggles and all. Here's to making peace with the only bodies we'll ever have and taking up all the space we want in them. There's so much more to do with this one wild and precious life than wage war on our own reflections. Let's not waste another moment. Be also kind to your magnificent body this week. It's been waiting. It has. It, it's, it's, your body has called me and said, hey, can you talk to them? Your body has been waiting for your friendship all this time. I'm in your corner, cheering you on. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for living. And I hope this week you appreciate and know and understand how much of a wonder your body is. And that you will join me again next time as we calm it down. To find more episodes of Calm It Down, see where I may be appearing in your area, or just simply want to know where to send me some chocolate chip cookies, visit calmitdownpodcast.com. This podcast was written and produced by yours truly, Chad Lawson, composer, pianist, and nationally recognized Sweet Tooth. The views, expressions, and techniques in this episode are of my personal opinion and not intended, nor should they, serve as a substitute for medical advice or diagnosis rendered to you by your individual doctor or other health care provider. Only a licensed physician should evaluate your situation, provide a diagnosis, or render other medical advice to you. And you should only act upon the advice of this physician. Now, I'm an extreme empath by nature, but my profession is that of a composer and pianist, not a licensed therapist or a physician. I hear from thousands of listeners how my music has helped them through various stages of emotional needs, and I simply want to offer this in future podcast episodes to aid those needs. So to find a list of licensed professionals in your area, please visit CometDownPodcast.com. And if you've enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review, or better yet, share it with a friend. While it takes less than 60 seconds to do, its impact will last for years to come as every little bit helps in growing the awareness and the importance of mental and emotional health. Thank you for listening. Thank you for living. And until next time, be kind to your mind 
and join me again as we calm it down. <laughs>